Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore, and welcome to episode number 7 of Creating a Space Shooter with Godot. So we have our player ship moving around the screen and everything, but it can't shoot, and that's the whole point of the game, so let's get that working. Now, we're going to have multiple bullets on our screen at once, between the player shooting and the enemy shooting, so we're actually going to make a bullet its own scene. It's its own individual object that's going to do something, so it requires its own scene, just like our player did. So we'll go ahead and create under the scene menu, a new scene. We're going to select a 2D scene, because we're making a 2D game. And our bullet is also going to be an area 2D. It has a collidable area. We need to know when it hits something. So we're going to add a node to our scene tree here. And it's going to be an area 2D node. And we want this to be the root node. So we're going to right click it and select make as scene root. And now our area 2D is the main root node of this scene. And we can then delete this node 2D that was there by default. So I'm going to rename this to bullet, and we can go ahead and now save the scene. I'll type control S, and I'm going to create a new folder in my resources folder for anything having to do with a bullet. So I'll create a folder called bullet, and I'll save my scene as bullet.tscene. There we go. Now the next thing that our bullet is going to need is a sprite. So I'm going to add a child node to my bullet, and I'll simply add a sprite node. From here, we can drag in the image that you want your bullets to look like. So under my textures folder, I'm going to have the player shooting red bullets, so I have this laser red image that I will drag into the texture field. And you can see we sort of have this red rounded laser beam. Now we still have a warning next to our area 2D, and it means we have to actually define the area of the area 2D node. So we're going to add a child node to it, and it's going to be a collision shape 2D. Remember, this is how we define a collision area for an area 2D. Now, my image is shaped kind of like a capsule, so I'm going to make the collision shape of my collision shape 2D node a capsule shape. So I'll click that, and then I can go ahead and resize this to sort of fit what the bullet looks like. So I think right around here, I think, is perfect. So that is the collidable area of the bullet. Next, a bullet needs to actually move. It's got to shoot across the screen. So in order to do that, we have to attach a script to our bullet. So I'll click the bullet root node, I'll click the attach script button, and I'll create a script called bullet.gd in my bullet folder, like so. I'm going to delete all the starting code except for the thing that says extending area 2D, extends area 2D, because this, note, this script is attached to an area 2D node here. So we want to be able to access its position and everything. Next, a bullet needs a speed. So I'm going to type var speed. That's going to be a float value, a decimal number. And I don't know. We'll we'll start off with we'll we'll start it off with 500 pixels per second. That's pretty fast. And if you wanted, you can type the word export in front of this variable. So export var speed. That way, in the editor, when you click on your bullet, you can actually modify the speed using the editor. Just a little helpful tip that you can do if you'd like. Now we know that our bullets are only going to be moving vertically, up and down. So we don't have to worry about having a velocity vector. We can just change the position based on whatever the speed is. Our bullet is constantly moving until it hits something. So I'm going to put the movement code in my physics process function, just because it has to do with movement. So every single time this function runs, we want to subtract from the current y position of this bullet. Remember. A negative y value means going up on the screen. So we're going to subtract our speed times delta. So we're essentially we're saying we're moving up on the screen 500 pixels every second. We get the every second part by multiplying by delta. So before we go any further, let's check to make sure this works. If I go into my gameplay scene, and I simply drag in my bullet.t scene right here into the gameplay scene, and move it, that way it starts at the bottom of the screen, so it's right there, and we run our game, we should hopefully see the bullet shoot straight up the screen. So at least we know that that's working. Okay, great. So let me delete this instance, the random bullet in our gameplay scene. I can just delete that like so. So we're back with just our player. And now let's make our player actually shoot this bullet. So to do that, I'm going to go into my player script here by clicking on that script icon. And we need a way to create a new instance of our bullet scene, add it to the current scene at the current position of our player, and make sure it shoots. So the first thing we need 
is some way to create instances of this bullet. And we do that through something called preloading. So at the top of my player script, I'm going to create a variable. And I like to prefix these with the word, the letters PL, which stands for a preloaded resource. I'll call it PL bullet. And we're going to set that equal to the preload function. And this is going to take in the file path to your bullet.t scene, your bullet scene right here. Okay, so what does preload do? Preload will basically take the resource that you specify, in our case, our bullet scene, and it will load it before our player is actually added into our game, when we run our game. So it'll basically take up a little bit of loading time when we first start our game to get this bullet scene loaded up. And then we have this variable that we assign it to called PL bullet, and we can then use this to create instances of our bullet T scene. We're going to be preloading a lot of resources in this series to create things like bullets and to spawn our enemies and such, so we'll get really used to working with preloading. Now we have to check if the player actually wants to shoot. Remember we made an input mapping for that. I'm going to put my shoot code in the normal function process. So in my process function we'll check if we are shooting. So we're going to say if input dot is action pressed. So for currently pressing, the shoot action is what I named it. Whoops, not UI except shoot. Then we want to spawn a bullet and shoot it. So first we have to create a new instance of our bullet. So we'll say var bullet is going to equal our preloaded bullet resource that we just created at the top here, which is a reference to our bullet scene, dot instance. And this is how you create a new instance of a scene. You first preload or load the scene and then you call dot instance on that variable. So we now have this bullet, but it's not actually in our game. We won't be able to see it anywhere. We didn't add it to anything. So in order to add this bullet to the scene, we're going to type get underscore tree. And what this will do is it'll get the current scene tree, kind of like what we see over here when we're editing our game. It'll basically get the current tree of nodes. And then we have to do dot current underscore scene. This will get the current scene of our game. Now since when our game starts up, our gameplay scene here, we set as our starting scene when we click the play button, this will be essentially our current scene. So in our player script, dot current scene refers to, in our case, the gameplay scene. And we can simply add anything we want to the scene. So we can do dot add underscore child, and we can add our bullet to the scene. So let's see if this works. We'll hit the play button. We can go here, press the space bar, and we kind of see something happening up here. It's not exactly working as we want, though. So as long as I hold the space bar, we, we see half of our bullet. And that's because we're not setting the position of the bullet instance. We obviously want the bullet to start from the same position as our player. All right, well, that should be easy enough. So if we go ahead and where we check for shooting, either before or after you add the bullet to the scene, We'll simply set the position of the bullet. So bullet.position equals, and we'll set it to our own position, the player's position. And if we go ahead and run this, we should hopefully see that our bullets are shooting out really, really fast because it's shooting a bullet for every single uh, process function call where we're holding the space bar. But you can see that it's definitely working. Our, our ship is definitely firing bullets. So we have a few things to fix with this for sure. So that's all there is to shooting bullets. Of course, we have to do a couple of things. We have to, first of all, make sure our bullets don't just fire out from the center of our ship. We kind of want them to come out of the guns on our ship, out of the wings. And we want to shoot two bullets at once because that's way cooler. And we also don't want the bullet to be firing at any moment the spacebar is being pressed. We want some type of cooldown. So we'll be adding that in the next couple of episodes. Thank you all so much for watching.